just a quick explanation of how PRI works in a conceptual way, without getting into the mechanics of it, just the sensory perception of it. Uh, using me as an example. So if you watched my videos, I talk quite often about sensing the ground, particularly on the left side. I was born with a visual system or developed a visual system as a child that was not being used appropriately. Or let's say my brain was not using my left eye and my right eye the same way. Uh, and because my left eye was so weak, in order to not have double vision, my brain just kind of suppressed, at least partially, the image from my left eye. So I was left with a very dominant right eye and a left eye that wasn't working too well. I could not sense the ground on the left. So every time I took a step, here's my, here I am. This is the left side of my body. My left leg is in the air. So I'm in right stance, left swing phase of walking. The majority of people are, and in this position, your pelvis will be to the right. That's what the left AIC pattern is. You are in a right stance and you're taking a step with your left foot, left hip flexors are on, uh, pelvis is oriented to the right and your weight is obviously on your right foot. The ground underneath my right foot is there. I'm pressing down into it. My brain senses it. The problem is with the next step. To my brain, the ground is going down. It's, it's dangerous. It's, it's, it's like I'm walking down a hill just with the left side of my body. So every time I take a step, my brain perceives the ground as moving down and away from me. So is it any wonder that I stayed extended? So I stayed arched as a protective mechanism. My brain's perception of the ground was this. My brain's perception of the ground on the right was this. Left, the ground underneath the left foot, ground underneath the right foot. And is it any wonder that you stay in a pattern a left AIC pattern, if that's what your brain is perceiving. That's dangerous. This is good. Might as well stay over here. And that's what the left AIC pattern is. So you see people walking and their weight never shifts to their left leg. The, the weight stays to the right side the entire time. Now, because I was so messed up, uh, I was probably patho PEC from you know, the age of seven or eight. My problem was that the normal PRI techniques, which are all designed to flip this situation, to bring the, the ground up on the left, couldn't work. My body could do it, but my sensory system and my brain wouldn't allow it. So over six and a half years, seven years, doing these techniques every day, I was a functional human, but I still had these issues of, of just tension. The worst of it went away pretty quickly. The SI joint issues went away pretty quickly. But I still had other aches and pains. It just wasn't enough to really perturb me. Let's put it that way. Because once you've going, having gone through what I did, anything else is just kind of not a big deal. So the PRI techniques, they helped. They would bring that ground up. So this became the ground underneath my left foot temporarily, but it wouldn't stay. And so when your sensory perception is so thrown off, that you can't make this ground underneath the left side become just like the ground underneath the right side. The ground can't come up so your brain can relax and say, oh, I feel safe to go to this left side. When it can't do it consistently or you can just never do it, that's where you need to alter your, alter the, the sensory input to your brain. So the first thing was this. This was a mouth guard. Uh, an acrylic splint. It's hard. You got to get it from a dentist. When I got out of my torsioned, twisted cranium state, in order to not, because I had this cross height, this was how I was organizing my muscle function. This ground underneath my right foot, that's the only thing I sense to the outside of my right foot. Well, right teeth, right foot, right teeth. The correlation is like this. People, I had a gentleman from Taiwan come to see me. Vincent, hope you're watching this. He showed me his shoe. The entire right side, outside border of the right shoe was completely worn away, completely worn away. The other parts of the sneakers, um, uh, 
the inside of the right shoe and then the left shoe barely looked like anything had been touched. But the outside of the right shoe is completely worn away. He had extra, he had bridge work done on his teeth on the right, and he sensed too much teeth on the right, especially in the back. So it was that bridge work that was way too excessive, and that's all he really felt. It's no wonder. So he had ground in his right teeth and ground underneath the right floor. Is it any wonder he felt a lot of tension through his right side? He couldn't let go of that right side tension because that's all his brain was perceiving. So when I got out of my crossbite, ground on the right, but in my teeth, same thing. In order to not keep using this as my way to stabilize my head and my cranium, because remember, I didn't have a functioning visual system, but I didn't know that. I had to get this mouth guard so that I would not keep going back to my teeth. Uh, I would be able to stabilize my body through normal PRI methods. Otherwise, I would just keep going back. My habitual bite, my malocclusion, my teeth, I would just keep using that as a way to stabilize myself. So I had to take that away with the mouth guard. That allowed my neck to relax. See this? It says tight necks. Necks are tight. When, this is your, then when, the, when your brain perceives the ground on the left like this, necks get tight to protect as a protective mechanism. Hip joints are loose. The left hip joint, that FA joint, AF, acetabulum on femur, femur on acetabulum, decompressed. It's always open. It's always relaxed. It's too relaxed because you never, when the ground is going down on the left, your brain doesn't allow you to put your weight on the left foot fully, so you never feel full compression through your left hip joint. So do you have a left hamstring? It's there, but it's not being used in upright activity. Left adduct, adduct ugh. Left adductor, left glute med anterior glute medius, left abs, that whole left ZOA, left AFIR area, uh, decompressed without ground underneath your left foot, without your brain sensing the ground underneath the left foot, you will have a decompressed state of affairs on the left side. Pain and tension, 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 tension on the left side. So I needed this to prevent me from using my teeth to stabilize my body. Because if you keep using your teeth, you can never return to the ground on the left. It just keeps you tight and it'll keep you to the right side. So these are often used for people who have still have too much neck tension. Sometimes they don't even have dental issues. Well, nothing like serious. But sometimes they need one of these to be made because their neck is still too tense and their neck cannot relax until they take away... Like they have a dental issue in the sense that they are kind of using their teeth a little bit as their, as their main sensory input for the cranium, but they may not actually have a malocclusion that needs any type of dental work. Let's put it that way. Uh, so sometimes these are needed to relax someone's neck because if the neck stays tight, it keeps them ungrounded. So it keeps them like this, ungrounded. Then, uh, about a year, no, two, two and a half years later maybe, I still couldn't get to the ground. I was still ungrounded. Orthotics. My feet couldn't sense the ground, couldn't reach the ground, so we brought the ground up to my feet so my brain could then sense the ground. This helped quite a bit. Uh, my leg length discrepancy went away because now I could sense pronation because I, I could sense my arches. So that's how that works. That brings, those orthotics brought the ground from here a little bit closer. I now started to feel it a little more, but I wasn't all the way there. Then in August, I went out to Nebraska. I, uh, I met with Ron and Heidi, who's the optometrist. They knew exactly what was going on. They look at my tests. They told me what the issue was, went way back, and they gave me a new prescription. They gave me these glasses. And this was where it became so obvious. I mean, I already knew what the issue was, but... Obviously, I couldn't fix it on my own because I can't make my own glasses. <laughs> so uh, they had me, I remember at the appointment, Ron put me and said, you know, stand on your left leg, reach forward with your left arm and touch your right foot while I was standing. With my normal glasses on, there was still too much back tension. Um, I, so I couldn't really do it. I could do it a little bit, but I just couldn't because there was still a little bit. I could do it a little, not enough. Then they gave me glasses with the changed prescription. I did it again, much easier. I, the tension had gone down. Then they gave me what was the prism. And once I put, they, they put the prism on the glasses, 
effortless. All the tension went away. Why? Because the prism changes your brain's perception of the ground. So my visual system still thought, my brain was still sensing the ground on the left, underneath my left foot, like this, at least to a little degree, on and off throughout the day. I could do all this left side activity and I would feel better, but I couldn't hold on to it. So every, it would just sneak up on me every now and then I'm like, ugh, my back is tense again. Because I would have it temporarily like this underneath the left foot, and then it would go back to that. I kept losing it. The prisms changed my brain's, I guess it changes the, how the light enters your eye, and it changed my brain's perception of the ground. So instead of the ground being like this, the ground was like this. It came up. The, the prisms made the ground come up perceptually. And when that happened, all the tension in my back went away immediately. So a lot of people don't understand the role of why people might need glasses. They might need a splint. They might need orthotics for their feet. That is why, to make the ground on the left come up or to turn off the neck that's overactive that keeping that is keeping them up and ungrounded it's the same thing necks and grounds if you say my neck hurts i say you're not sensing the ground it's so it's so obvious at this point uh if you're if you feel the weight on the outside of your right foot your neck on the right side is going to be tight guaranteed no i can't guarantee but most likely uh your left hip is weak it's all the same system. Once you see how these patterns emerge, uh, it's, it's kind of like clockwork. Everyone needs a left hamstring. Everyone needs, even if you're just a straight left AIC, right BC pattern, you still have a little bit of this going on. Why? Because your pelvis is oriented to the right and your weight is on the right foot too much. So perceptually, not as bad as mine, but you're still a little bit like this whether you realize it or not. So you could do all these left AIC techniques. You could do all the myokinematic restoration course techniques, you know, the 90-90s, the hip shifts, all of these things. Are they for muscles? Yes. But what are they doing? To your brain, they're bringing the ground up. That's why you have to, so you can stabilize on that left side and your brain can sense the left side, the ground underneath your left foot, so you can relax. Uh, so these are not gym exercises where you're just working a hamstring or working an adductor. If you don't, in, in, uh, for people who are trying to learn PRI and trying to use it, if you don't use the left heel and the right arch to give you the muscles that you're trying to work, you're missing the biggest part of the picture, which is to move the ground up so your brain can relax and you can feel good.